good morning today we are going to discuss the negative energy states in the last class we have discussed the plane wave solutions and we have seen that just like the klein gordon equation dirac equation also gives positive and negative energy solutions so you have to explain the negative energy solutions the energy eigen values are plus or minus root c square p square plus m square c raised to 4 here m is the rescue mass So when energy levels are calculated in the relative equation of quantum mechanics, there are two set, one all positive, and the other all negative. We have represented the positive energy values as E plus, and the negative energy values as E minus. So E will be minimum when your p value is zero. So for E plus, the minimum value will be. When p equal to zero, this equation becomes e equal to m square c raised to 4 the whole raised to uh, 1 by 2, so it will become m c square. Similarly, for e minus, when p equal to zero, the value will be minus m c square. Now, as p increases, here the value of e plus will increase from uh, plus m c square to infinity. Because as p tends to infinity, the right term will tends to infinity. In, in a similar way, for e minus, the value will start from minus m c square, and it will decrease to minus infinity as p increases. So we can graphically represent uh, this one like uh, in the y-axis. We are taking the energy values. Let it be zero. So this corresponds to e equal to zero. Here the energy spectrum of a free particle has two branches corresponding to e plus and e minus. The value of e plus starts from m c square and uh, extends to positive infinity. That this represents the energy corresponds to m c square. So the e plus value can Start from m c square and it can increase up to infinity. Similarly, for e minus, the value starts from minus m c square. This corresponds to minus m c square, and as p increases, this value can decrease up to minus infinity. So here you can see the energy spectrum of a free particle has two branches corresponding to e plus and e minus. One starts at m c square and uh, extends to plus infinity, and the other starts from minus m c m c square and uh, extending to minus infinity. Now these two branches are separated by a forbidden gap of width 2 m c square. This difference is m c square, and this difference is also m c square. So the total difference is 2 m c square. Now it is very difficult to imagine such negative energy states because Even a small perturbation could cause a transition in an electron in a positive energy state to a state of negative energy state. If we consider this uh, one electron in this particular energy level, even a very small perturbation can lead to a transition of this electron to uh, the lowest energy level minus m c square. Now consider an ordinary electron of mass e m. So it will be somewhere here if its uh, momentum is zero. It will have an energy m c square, but now this electron can make a transition to this lowest energy level equal to minus m c square. So even a very small perturbation can lead to a transition of this electron from this m c square level to minus m c square level, and correspondingly it will emit a radiation of energy to m c square. But no such things are observed in reality. So, what do the negative energy levels mean, and why didn't all the electrons in the universe fall into them and disappear? The explanation was given by Dirac. According to Dirac, electrons didn't fall into the negative energy states because all these negative energy states are already full. As electrons are fermions, Pauli's exclusion principle will prevent transition to such occupied states. So according to Dirac what we call empty space is actually a sea of negative energy electrons and it is assumed that 
these electrons have no physically observable effects. So if we give an electron in the negative energy state enough energy, it will jump up into the real world and visible as an ordinary electron. And the electrons in this particular area that is electrons having negative energy states have no physically observable effects. So these are invisible. But when you are giving sufficient energy for an electron in this negative energy state, it will promote it into the real world and would be normal in every respect, but it would leave a hole in this negative energy state. Hole means the absence of a negatively charged electron. So when you are when you are giving sufficient energy for an electron in this negative energy state, it will make a transition to the real world leaving behind a hole here and according to Dirac such a hole will behave like a positively charged particle. At the time Dirac came out with this, this idea no one had the guts to suggest that there might be a new particle with a positive charge and the mass of an electron and nobody took the idea very seriously until Carl Anderson an American physicist discovered positron in 1932. The positron has come to be referred to as anti-electron because when it comes into contact with an electron, they annihilate each other. Actually, the positron was the first discovered antimatter. So, Dirac's electron C clearly explains the nature of annihilation of a positron and electron. When an electron comes into contact with a hole in the negative energy C, it spontaneously fills the hole and consequently must release the excess energy in the form of radiation. So, using this uh, concept, we can explain the pair production and the pair annihilation. So, when an electron in the negative energy state acquires enough energy, it will be promoted into the real wave, leaving behind a hole here and an electron here. So, it can be considered as the pair production process. For pair production process, it requires an energy equivalent to the energy difference between these two states. That is. Here, if it is uh, MC, here, the energy is mc square and here the energy is minus mc square. So, the minimum energy required is 2 mc square. Similarly, if there is a hole in the negative energy state, an electron from this real world can make a transition to this negative energy state and it, it will fill the gap of this hole and it can be considered as the pair annihilation process. The great explosion of particle physics since 1940s has its roots in Dirac's development of quantum theory. So now we can conclude. What Dirac suggested is that all negative energy states are ordinarily occupied by electrons and this sea of negative energy electrons have no physically observable effects. When an electron occupying the negative energy states pick up energy and goes to the positive energy states it takes its place as an ordinary observable electron. The empty space in the midst of the negative energy states behaves as if it is a particle of positive charge and this empty space is called a hole. Okay, thank you.